Hello everyone, let's shoot for the last question of the weekly contest 282 and the question is minimum time to finish the race. Here in this question we are given tires configuration. Along with this we are told that we need to complete these many laps in the Formula 1 race. What we need to do, we need to identify the minimum time taken to finish the race. Along with this we are also told that whenever you are swapping tires or changing tires you have to pay the time penalty of change time which is specified as integer in the question. I'll be walking you through these examples as well as the approach to go about it by the presentation. So let's quickly move on to it. Also I want to highlight this formula. Kindly please go through it. It will help you understand the question better. Along with this I would also like to highlight the change time parameter that has a limit of less than 10 raised to power 5. This is also very important. If you miss out on these constraints, you can never land up on the correct solution. So let's get started. Let's shoot for the Formula 1 race. Minimum time to finish the race, lead code 2188. And let's try and understand the question because that is of utmost importance. Here we are given tire configuration. So we have blue tire and F and R parameters for blue happens to be 2, 3. We have the red black tire and FRR configurations for it comes out to be as 3 and 4. The number of laps that are needed to be completed in order to finish the race is 4 and the change time pen penalty that is given to us is of 5 units. Now what does the question mean? So the question says, uh, let's assume you are shooting for the first tire that is of blue in the first lap then what would be the time penalty or time cost associated with it? It's equal to 2 units. By 2 units, let's use the same formula. The formula said F into R raised to power lap count minus 1. So what is the lap count? Lap here is of 1 unit because we are going for the first lap and F comes out to be 2. 2 into R is 3 raised to power 0. So it turns out to be 2. That means in order to complete the first lap, the time cost would come out to be of 2 units. Pretty awesome. If we go by this blue tire, let's assume that we are going for by this blue tire. Now if I want to complete my second lap using the same tire, what do I do? I again use the same formula and for completing the second lap, how much time penalty or time cost do I have to pay 2 into 3 raised to power 1 which will come out to be of 6 units. Similarly, let's assume I am shooting for the third lap and this time what would be the cost associated with it? 2 into 3 raised to power 2. 3 raised to power 2 is 9, 9 into 2 comes out to be 18. So far so good. Now let's do a similar kind of thing for the black tire as well. In case we are going for this particular tire, then how much time would be associated for completing the first lap? It would be of 3 units. For the second tire, for the second lap, how much time would be associated with it? 3 into 4 units, which comes out to be 12. And for the third lap, it would be equal to 3 into 4 square. 4 square is 16, 16 into 3 is 48. Now let's bring in another parameter into picture which is change time. In this question it is specified you have unlimited tire supplies and whenever you are deciding to halt your race and perform the change tire operation you have to pay the penalty of change time units. So let's hypothetically assume in the third lap we decide to perform the changing of tire operation as a result of which we will have to pay the penalty of 5 units. And now whenever you are doing this, you can, you are free to choose any of these two tires, the blue one or the black one. And it's a reset kind of a thing. Again, you'll have to start from the 0th index for the L value will start from the, from one, assuming that it's a fresh tire and you are not reusing it. So your, you, the formula will be updated to F into R raised to power zero. As a result of which you have an option either to pick up this, this tire, the blue tire or the black tire. You will be picking up the blue one because it is of lower value. 
as a result of which you simply have to pay 7 units of time 5 plus 2 turns out to be 7 and for the subsequent lapse you can simply use this formula to compute your cost so if you carefully observe you have reduced this 18 value to 7 which will improvise your solution and this can be done at any step we will not do it at the second step because here the cost comes out to be of 6 units while here the cost comes out to be of 7 units in the least possible case it makes sense to perform the change tire operation in the third lap I hope you have understood all the possibilities that the question is going through and the first one states that you don't change the tire at all and the second one states you are performing the change tire operation so far so good if you carefully observe then the problem boils down to knapsack dp at the ith index signifies the total time taken to complete the ith lap which is equal to math dot minimum of the total time taken to complete the ith lap so far the value that you have calculated comma the total time taken to complete the jth lap plus change time plus dp of i minus j so consider you are calculating the value for dp of i and let's assume j is in somewhere in middle so dp of j this value plus dp of i minus j this value plus the change time cost associated with it simple and straightforward knapsack we have solved plenty of questions in the past so i'm not reiterating it over here to conclude it further there is a small catch what is that catch i talked about the constraints that were specified in the question what was the constraint? The constraint was change time should be less than or equal to 10 raised to power 5 and the value of r that was specified in the question, the minimum value of r happens to be 2 and we can use this to our advantage. Assuming we are not changing any tire at any intermediary step, we can go up till 18 laps and after this we will definitely have to change tires because this value turns out to be equal to 2 raised to power 17 which is greater than your change time value since it is greater than your change time value at max in the worst case if you continue using the same tire again and again you can complete 18 different laps after which you will definitely go for changing the tires and starting it over from the first position that you have already pre-computed so the so whenever you have laps greater than 18 you can choose to definitely perform the change tire operation and give the penalty of change time that is specified in the equation. This will help us reutilize the previously computed values in the past. To conclude it further, let's quickly have a look at the coding section. Here I have created an array without change cost. That means you are calculating the lap time associated with first 18 laps when you are not changing any tire in between. If you want to change the tire, you have to pay the penalty of change time for which we calculated the upper limit to be of 18 laps and we go ahead and fill in with the max value integer dot max value we start the iteration over, over tires and we calculate the fnr values from it and what i have done here i have created a variable time to complete laps i start building this time variable I, uh, I assume the lap count to be i equal to 1 first then 2 then 3 up till the total number of laps that are given to me I calculate the time associated for completing the ith lap using the formula that was specified in the question and I add it to the time to complete the laps variable that I have created that is that will give me the total time provided I am not changing any tire in between and in case it goes beyond 2 raised to power 17 which was the constraint in the slideshow as well I break it because if it is going beyond then I have to perform the change time operation and reutilize the value so I straight away go and go ahead and break it going ahead once I am out of it I simply set without change at the ith index equals to math.min without change that I have calculated so far and time to complete the end laps that is specified in the question so we call this as a pre-compute step and we will be utilizing this pre-computed values in our knapsack problem. So what do I do? I go ahead and create the DPRA and here the size happens to be the number of laps plus 1 
I start the iteration from the ith index up till the number of laps that are given to me and with each iteration I'm incrementing the value of i. If my i happens to be less than 19, that simply means I can assume the dp of ith index be, to be equal to without change value. I'm not performing any change operation in the default case. Otherwise, if it goes beyond that, I can assume it to be of maximum integer value. I start the jth, I start another loop, which is a typical way of writing the knapsack problem. I equals to j, uh, integer j equals to one, j is less than i, j plus plus. And I use the same formula that I showed in the presentation. dp of i is equal to max dot minimum dp of i, dp of j plus change time plus dp of i minus j. In the end, dp at the value of number of laps given to me will return me the answer. So let's try this up, accept it. I hope you got the context and like the solution. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.